Dear beautiful Savior, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And the signs of it are everywhere. Just like in a few short weeks, we'll see the signs everywhere as we journey further into spring for Minnesota's fifth and most favorite season of the year, road construction, right? Times where we'll see signs like this and then like this, okay? There's a bridge going out by my house. I'm looking forward to that one in particular, right? Which then leads us to this sign, okay? Absolutely. Those are the signs we're expecting to see. And you know, we may not always appreciate the road construction itself, but I do at least appreciate the heads up that it's coming. You know, think about it, you're driving on the road, you're kind of in unfamiliar places or maybe roads you don't go down very often and so you just don't know. And so the sign shows up telling you, hey, something's changing. In particular, there's road construction ahead. And what I appreciate about it is it prepares me well for the road construction, right? I go through a little bit of a checklist before I go into it. What's the snack and beverage situation like, right? Like, do I have the right snacks and drinks to get through the road construction? Because sometimes it takes hours and you might get thirsty. What is the tunage situation? Yeah, I said tunage. Just deal with it, all right? Yeah, absolutely. On the radio, like what music do you have on? Is it something you can find joy in as you travel through those roads? Or even the most famous question when you've got kids. Anybody need to use the bathroom, right? Great. Seriously, though, anybody need to use the bathroom? Because I don't know about you, but for us, it always seemed like when we were in road construction, that's when kids had to stop and use the bathroom, and the exits were always closed to find a place to go. And so we may not always appreciate the road construction itself, but the signs are helpful. Because they not only help us see what's there in front of us, but they also help us see what we can expect to see going forward. And that's the beautiful part of our gospel text from Mark 16, 1 through 8 today. That it not only helps us understand and see what's here in front of us, but it also helps us understand and see what we can expect to see going forward in our lives, even into eternity. And so we uh, dive into the text here, looking at the, the three women who were introduced at the very beginning. And we're told at the very beginning that they went to go put spices on Jesus' body. But when they arrived at the tomb, they started seeing all the signs of the resurrection around them. Look to the screen. And looking up, the women saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. So the signs are there. And it's a good thing they're there because if you notice in the text, Jesus isn't. Right? You look at some of the other gospel accounts of the resurrection. Jesus shows up. He's got some words of comfort and encouragement. In Mark, he doesn't show up. He's already gone. He's already doing his thing. And so the signs of the resurrection are really important because they tell us that he is alive. From the empty tomb to a, a message to share with Peter, who last check right, was filled with guilt and shame over betraying and denying his Savior, to even the fear that the women experienced at the tomb. You know, jokingly, we talked, you know, how does that gospel end for Easter? And they were afraid. Here's the gospel on Easter for you, right? Like, that's a good thing. That's how we want to leave you today, in fear. Absolutely not. There's joy in that. But those are the signs of the resurrection. They are pointing to the fact that Jesus is alive. Because think of it this way. Without the resurrection, there is no empty tomb. Without the resurrection, there's nothing to tell Peter. In fact, if anything, you're going to be lying to him about something that's not true, which is going to make him feel worse and dig him deeper into that guilt and shame. And without the resurrection, there is no fear. Because the women going to the tomb were expecting to see something else. They were expecting to see death. They were expecting to be filled with sorrow and sadness, and that was completely opposite of what they experienced, all because Jesus is alive. So the signs are there 
from an empty tomb to a hopeful message to even the expectations being turned upside down. But what makes it even greater about these signs is they're not just telling the women there, hey, Jesus is alive. They're also helping them understand and see what they can expect to see going forward. That empty tombs, it's going to be the norm. That death doesn't have the final say. That it doesn't have the final victory. And the same with guilt and shame powerful elements in our lives, powerful things we experience in our lives, but even that power will be overcome by Jesus. And even the things we think are normal, the expectations that exist in the world, even those will be flipped up on their head because of Christ in his resurrection. The signs are there. They were there for the women to see in the text. And they're there for us to see today, too. As long as we can just open our eyes to see them for ourselves. And that's where the challenge comes in, in seeing the signs of the resurrection. It's hard to see them as sin-filled people living in a sin-filled and broken world. It's hard to see the signs of the resurrection when our cemeteries are still so full and the goodbyes, the farewells we share at at funeral services, memorials, celebrations of life, whatever it may be, when they feel so permanent and final, it's hard to see the signs of the resurrection. And even in the guilt and the shame, it's hard to see those signs when our heads are looking down because of the weight of that guilt and shame on our shoulders, on ourselves. Either things we've done, things we haven't done, just like Peter even in denials and betrayals and whatever else it might be. Those are heavy things to carry and it's hard for us to get our eyes to, to look up to see the signs when it's just pushing us down constantly. As if that's who we are as if that guilt and shame is exactly where we belong. And even with the expectations, it's hard to see the signs of the resurrection when we look at the world around us and we see prejudice and bigotry and hatred and senseless violence as if that's normal. Even being told that's just normal. Even death itself as if that's the way it's supposed to be. Because that's what we so commonly experience in this broken world. It's hard to see the signs of the resurrection. But that's why today is so important. That's why celebrating today really matters. Because it focuses us. It it gives us the opportunity, the excuse even, to lift up our heads and see the sign that is so blatant, so right there in front of us, we can't miss it. To see for ourselves that Jesus is alive. And that life, that resurrection It changes everything. Because even when tombs aren't emptied, we still know that they're full of hope. Hope that they won't be empty forever. Hope that the the goodbyes, the farewells we shared weren't permanent, but that they weren't forever. Hope that the graves, no matter how deep they might be, no matter how painful the sadness and sorrow is that's buried with them, no matter how large the stone might be that's rolled in front of the tomb, no matter those things, it won't stop Christ from going and bringing his life, his resurrection into those valleys of dry bones. Even signs of restoration, and reconciliation in the midst of guilt and shame. Being told that we are too far gone, 
too far removed, too far away from our God in Christ, and we see the exact opposite is true. Even for Peter, that he would call him out in the text to go after him, to pursue him, to go and make sure he knows that there is reconciliation and healing in his guilt and shame. That's what the sign of the resurrection shows you today. You might feel that. You might feel that you're too far gone, that you're too far removed, that you're too far away for your God in Christ to come find you, but it's not true. Because the truth is, no matter where you are, no matter how you might feel, no matter what you might carry, you are never too far gone, never too far lost for your God in Christ to come find you and lift you up out of the pit of despair, out of the pit of grief and shame and guilt, telling you that's not who you are, that the guilt and shame does not define you, but rather the life and salvation that Christ has for you, that is what defines you. And that even changes what you see as you look to the world, to be bold and confident in saying, the things I see, it's not the way it's supposed to be. The violence, the anger, the hatred, that's not normal. Even though everybody else says it, thinks it, whatever it might be, that's not normal. And not only have the boldness and confidence to speak into that truth, but then to also live your life to change what people see so that they actually know the way it's supposed to be so that they actually know in the midst of hatred and violence and whatever else, there is love, there is grace, there is forgiveness that comes from Jesus Christ, that even in the midst of death itself, there is life. And it all comes because of the biggest sign that has ever been shown. The most basic and simple truth that we have that we share, that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. That Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. And the signs are everywhere. And beautiful Savior, may you always see those signs. Because in them, what you'll always see is the God in Christ who loves you and who is with you wherever you go. No matter where that journey down life's roads may take you, no matter the highways or the byways you might drive on, where you might find yourself as you walk through life, your God is with you. And my hope today is that the signs not only help you see that, but also help you see and understand that you can expect that every day that is to come into eternity. Amen. 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 Would you please stand?